Shati Dukrin Karane. And later on he says, Mayam, Mayam Midam, Akilang Hitva, Brahma Padang Twang, Pravisha Viditva. Bhaja Govindam. Bhaja Govindam. Worship Govinda. Written by who? Shankaracharya. Shankaracharya, the greatest teacher of Advaita in the history of the world, wrote, let me see, my God. Dozens, dozens of devotional works. Now, he also wrote the commentary on the Mandukya Upanishad that makes completely outrageous statements like this. There is no dissolution, no birth, no one in bondage, no one aspiring for wisdom, no seeker of liberation, and no one liberated. This is the absolute truth. <laughs> Both these realities, the unborn material world seen by the Advaitins, the liberated ones, and the real material world seen by the Dwaitans, those who are in duality, coexist simultaneously, just like the rope and the snake. The snake is not in the rope. The snake is something imagined. It has no real existence. And similarly, this material world is like that. But for those who are in the material world, it's real, it's tangible. It's consequential. The things that we do in the material world can either bring us to liberation or keep us in bondage forever. It's up to us. Cause and effect is real within the context of the material world. Now, I was just reading Ramana Maharshi's Uladu Narpadu. And of course, Ramana Maharshi is another big Advaitin teacher. And he says, because the world is seen, we have to infer a common cause, a Lord possessing unlimited powers to appear as the diversity. The pictures consisting of names and forms, the seer, the canvas, the light, all these are he himself, capital he, capital himself. God, this is God. And this is an Advaitin, not only an Advaitin, a most prominent Advaitin, telling we have to worship God. And in his ashram, Raman Ashramam, in Tiruvannamalai, Sri Ramana instituted the worship of Shiva and Vishnu <laughs> and Ganapati and, uh, and Ma, huh? and so many gods and goddesses, and that worship is still going on to the present day. And the same with Shankara. Shankara toured all over India, and he established or encouraged the establishment of many temples to different gods. Now, how is that? If he believes or if he sees that the world is unborn, 
and that all of this is Maya, huh? Maya, Maya Midan, he says. <laughs> How then can he establish temples? Not only that, he also established the standards of worship and how the rituals were to be uh, performed and so on like this. He was very much involved with worship of God and goddess. So then some half-assed neo Edwaitan comes on our channel and says that the stories in Shiva Purana are childish. My God, be careful. You don't know what you're messing with here. When you say something like this, when you censure Shiva or Vishnu or any of the great gods, you're inviting a disaster in your life. I mean, we just went through the ninth and 10th chapter of the Srishti Kanda of Shiva Purana, where Vishnu says to Shiva, if any of my devotees censure you, please assign them perpetual residence in hell. Huh? And for his part, Shiva says, if any of my devotees blaspheme you, they lose all their merits. So just see, now, this is Shiva speaking. Shiva is Brahman directly. He is Nirguna Brahman coming into Saguna in form as Rudra, born from Brahma's anger when his sons, the four Kumaras, refused to take up family life and populate the universe. <laughs> so just see. The Brahman himself is saying that anyone who blasphemes or offends the personalities of Godhead goes to hell. And yet, these stupid neo Advaitins think that they can casually and callously offend God, even on a forum like this one, a channel that specializes in the absolute truth. Very dangerous, very, very dangerous for everyone. And of course, he rationalized it, you know, but this is Neo Advaita. He doesn't even recognize that he's a Neo Advaitin, but he is because he's saying what Neo Advaitins say that because Everything is unborn in the material universe. It doesn't matter what we do. And we certainly don't have to worship God or do any of those nasty rituals. <laughs> what idiots. Huh? He calls them mudha. Shankara says these are mudha. A mudha is literally means an ass. Huh? If you've ever dealt with an ass, a donkey, they're extremely stubborn and stupid. And they stick to their habits, even if you beat them. Huh? They're so stupid. So these neo Advaitins are the same. Huh? They have their habits. They like sense gratification. They like to be independent of anyone's authority. They like being, you know, who do they think they are? They like to poke fun at people who perform rit rituals and rites of religion. They like to think themselves very superior and look down on people who have religious and spiritual knowledge. And really, they're just lazy. They're just lazy. They don't want to submit to anybody. They don't want to accept a guru. They don't want to serve God. They don't want to do any of the rituals or other instructions given in the scriptures. They don't follow any authority or a line of reasoning, except that appeals to their pride and their ignorance. So I, I'm really done with these people. And anybody from now on who posts any of this neo adwaita bullshit on this channel gets their posting privileges revoked 
immediately. No discussion. I'm through with it. I don't want the honest viewers to be exposed to this kind of nonsense. And I won't tolerate it anymore. You know, I, I've tried to discuss with these people. I've tried to present evidence from the scriptures, even the scriptures that they pretend to follow. But it doesn't do any good. It goes in one ear and out the other. I've been talking about consciousness, the four states of consciousness, for, I don't know, five years now. And only a couple of people have really got it. That when you see the world, as Ramana says, you have to have God. Otherwise, how does this world come into existence? You know, even if the, the world is like the snake in the rope and the snake example, somebody has to imagine it. Somebody has to come up with the idea. How did we get these beings, these bodies? Huh? They're tremendously sophisticated. And the atomic structures and the other laws of physics are so perfectly balanced to create the conditions for the arousing of intelligent life. This is called the anthropic principle. The anthropic principle means the universe seems to be tuned, perfectly balanced, for the arising of human life in particular. How is that? How could that be without an intelligent designer? It's not possible. Even the simplest machine requires a designer, someone with vision, someone who could see, oh, if we do things this way, then this will work and it'll happen. So if you don't worship the designer, if you don't try to have a relationship with God. You're just an idiot. You're just an ass, a stubborn mule. So get off this channel. I don't want you around, and I certainly don't want your comments. So this is the policy going forward, that I don't tolerate any nor neo adwaitan discussion on this channel, period. So I don't want people offending God. Huh? Why aren't you grateful? Why aren't you intelligent? Why don't you worship God? As all the scriptures say, even the greatest teachers of Advaita, why don't you follow them? Why don't you follow anybody? Why do you just justify all your nasty habits in terms of some kind of phony realization? I'm really through with it. I'm really disgusted by it. And I'm out of patience. I'm not dealing with it anymore. So go study the scriptures. Get some intelligence in your brain. Huh? Read the scriptures. They're true. The Vedic scriptures give the absolute truth. So if you don't accept it, it means you're an idiot. Okay? I don't want idiots in my life, and I don't want them around me, and I certainly don't want them around my students and other innocent, na nice people who, who watch this channel. So, you know, either get smart or get lost. That's my message to you, neo Dwaytons. Now, <laughs> the rest of you, be warned that this... Neo Advaita teaching is poison. It's absolute poison. And you have to stay away from it. That's why I don't watch videos from other teachers, because they're all pretty much uh, laced with this poison of Neo Advaita, because these guys are all representatives of organizations. And to maintain their organization and their big buildings, and their nice lifestyles, they have to raise a lot of money. So they compromise. You know, even Sarva Priyananda, he's compromised with the neo Advaitins. So, you know, I don't watch any of these guys because I don't want to get my thoughts mixed up by hearing their nonsense. I go right to the scriptures. 
Shiva Purana, the Upanishads, the other Puranas, the Tantras. I go straight to the scriptures. I don't read anybody's interpretation, except for a few like Ramana and Shankara, who I know uh, and trust to have the absolute truth. So be careful, people, and avoid this curse of Neo Advaita. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya. <laughs>